Well hello everybody, Exeter Rider, thanks for joining me once again. Now this week is one of my most requested uh, bikes to review and you've already guessed what it is, well giving away the title is, is half the battle isn't it? But basically it is the Royal Enfield 350 Classic. It's a bike which I've been longing to try as well because I, I had a bit of a love affair with the, the 500 Classic that I rode a few years ago and uh, then naturally this 350 come out in its Euro 5 form and I've been gagging to get on this bike. Uh, kindly CMS phoned me up and uh, let me know that this one was in ready to try. Now I can look at this bike all day long. If I had this in the garage I'd, uh, I'd probably be polishing it all the time and keeping it nice because to look at this bike is absolutely beautiful. It's, it's a really beautiful beautiful thing. Uh, I'm sure you're all thinking the same as me. Uh, <laughs> I want to point out the bits that are beautiful about it. Uh, I don't really need to because it's, it it all is really, isn't it? I mean, I, I haven't met anyone yet that said to me, what a horrible looking bike. It's just so nice to look at, you know, uh, whether it's the, the nice mud guards that wrap around, all the chrome. Um, I'll be honest, I don't know if I could uh, have the patience to keep all that chrome shiny. I, I've, I'm very limited on time in my life uh, with business family and also I've got a YouTube channel <coughs> believe it or not um, it's just so nice to look at you know even down to these retro headlights here look at that you know it's just beautiful isn't it lovely back end uh, I believe we've got halogen light you know and again I love that about Royal Enfield that they're still sticking in light bulbs so if your lights do go wrong then it's just a case of swapping out a light bulb rather than a, a 500 pound LED light. You know, these bikes are, to me are, are just what motorbiking is all about. I'm looking at it now. I'm, I need to get on and get on the bike and have a ride for you. But let's get on the bike and have a ride. So I haven't ridden one of these for about three years, as I say. Last time I rode one was the 500. How does it compare with the 500? Well, you're down on the low down torque that the 500 had, for sure. But that's not saying it's slow either. It's, uh, it's still got plenty of low down torque. So one of the questions you might wonder is, who's this bike for? Uh, I would say that it's going to be for uh, original classic 500 owners. I think they're going to find it uh, quite refreshing not to have the vibes and to have the better brakes and uh, frankly I think it's a better built bike actually overall it feels a bit more stable the suspension's better um, and yet it still feels very much like the 500 but just obviously with a little less power 45 pounds to tax it per year insurance is going to be good and uh, it's, it's a great bike to have in the garage just to go out and have a look at admire it and then perhaps take it out on a Sunday. Uh, suspension is okay. It's, I'd say it's quite firm. It's a bit kind of non-eventful really. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's okay in the front because obviously you, you don't really feel the front as much as you feel the rear. Uh, we got coiled springs on the back and uh, I would say that it's, it's just okay. I, I would say if anything, I would, would have liked it have been a little bit softer really, but it doesn't get jarring or crashy or anything like that. It's actually still pretty nice, pretty good. So plodding around at 30 miles per hour, and I can't say this about many bikes, but it's actually really nice. Because again, it, the bike doesn't make you feel like you're in any rush. You just, you just take the world as it comes really. I mean, I'm, I'm really enjoying this ride. I'm soaking up the scenery. Right then guys, so I've just come out the garage. I put 10 pound in and it nearly filled it right up. Just one bar missing from fully full. So uh, you can easily expect to get 
around 80 to 90 miles to the UK gallon on the on this 350 so it's got a, a nice amount of pull on it but not as much as the old 500 had of course low down vibrations I can feel the the engines alive pumping away underneath me with that long stroke engine down there 349cc a steady move up to 70 miles per hour I've got a big headwind here today as well so that needs to be taken into account but at 70 I got vibes coming through the pegs and through the seat but not uncomfortable vibes like the old 500 had I could just leave this open all day long and I'll be fine with that so doing dual carriageway work I would prefer to be on the back roads but it's okay it's all right you can do it and again the comforts there obviously I haven't got a screen so I'm getting all of the wind which you'd expect but overall uh, that's uh, that's more than acceptable for a 350cc bike you could happily do some mileage doing that as long as you can take the wind blast seating position is uh, legs out forward again uh, a very very comfortable riding position I don't think you can get more of a, a comfortable riding position than what this is it feels a, a really premium bike all the levers and the clutch and uh, and the front brake and even the rear brake is very reachable you haven't got to reach for the rear brake or point point your feet down it's in a really nice position and that's one of the things I really like about these classic bikes is that they are uh, so comfortable you know they're so natural to sit on you know very much like being on an armchair it's um, just a, a, you know it's really comfortable there's a slight reach for the bars downwards but again you, you, you get used to that overall but it feels solid it feels so strong this bike so you know it's quite stable as well but it does just feel so strong and if you want to get a lick on then there's still a bit of power to do that after about 55 it takes its time to uh, get up there but it does still get up there eventually but in the meantime you're having fun <laughs> and with a smile on your face out into the country lanes not sure how big the front is there but it seems to be gliding over the bumpy bits quite nicely this is lovely this is great fun that back brake is fantastic and that's one thing I'm taking away from this bike as well is how good the brakes are you know certainly compared to the uh, the old versions of this bike the front was very very wooden almost non-existent <laughs> but it's all part of the charm I never minded that god yeah the back is fantastic yeah pottering in the rain like this is, is lovely and I would say that around 50 miles an hour between 50 and 60 let's say I would say is where it's happiest these are the roads it likes to ride and uh, as a rider it, it feels right as well it feels nice right let's cross over to the walk round now start with the fit and finish i think uh, now first of all the chrome really sticks out on this bike there's many different color options which you can go for with this bike including uh, all black version as well which is powder coated that might be my personal preference the only reason being is that to keep this chrome in good nick uh, will take take time and it also comes with a center stand as well decent sized mud guards as well front and rear which you need and what a nice change isn't it that you've got a nice big 
wrap around front mud guard so all the muck doesn't go up against the engine there. This particular one has a decent bash plate as well. And again, it's going to help keep the engine clean because they're not the easiest bikes to keep clean, of course, because they are quite fiddly. Moving over to the front brake, they're made by Vibre, which is an off uh, cast of Brembo, uh, same company. Nice bike. Thank you. So everything about the bike feels really authentic. We have the old fashioned looking headlight here with its beak going over the top, which I think looks great. You know, you really know it's going to be a classic coming towards you if you see the headlight like that. This particular version has the rear rack, which I believe is an extra, but every bike does come with a pillion seat. And I do believe, I think you can take that off and just have it as a, a solo rider, so to speak. Pillion Comfort Rise, it's much like the Meteor. It's quite a big padded seat and it seems very comfortable. Obviously I can't sit on it very well, but I know the Meteor one was actually really comfortable considering that it is quite narrow. Rider seat is, again, it's really nice, very wide, and yet yeah, you can get your feet down quite easily. And also the foot peg stance as well is nice, like so, because your legs are out the front here, and it's, it's lovely like that. I love that feeling that you're just straight out, very natural feeling position, as are the bars as well. I'd say that I'm slightly over, uh, lent over to reach the bars, but you know, nothing too much, but this is just so comfortable. The, the operation of the brake lever, it's just there. You know, on so many bikes, you have to really push down on your feet to find the, the brake, but this is just instantly there all the time. Now on the dashboard, we have a beautiful looking analog dash here with miles per hour on the outside and kilometers per hour on the inside. Ignition is on, off and steering lock and we have the space here for the tripper nav. And my feet down is on the center stand and I'm on a bit of a funny surface here. I'm five foot eight, I've got a 30 inch inside leg measurement. When this bike is off the side stand, I can flat foot it. It's not the lightest feeling bike, but I think that's a good thing because it, it feels like this bike is made well and that it's, it's made with quality. They haven't tried to save pennies on uh, reducing the, the feel of the uh, brake lever or the clutch lever. It's all really nice, really chunky. You know, again, it feels proper old school um, bike in there. So let's run quickly through some stats with you. So the engine is a 349cc single cylinder that produces 27 newton meters of torque at 4,000 RPM. It's a five speed gearbox, which is geared quite nicely, and it produces 20 horsepower at 6,100 RPM. It also has a 13 litre fuel tank, which will be very frugal, and the seat height is 805 millimetres. So one of the things I really like about Roy Enfield is the way that they're making the bikes so affordable for what you get. You get a huge amount of value uh, in these bikes, whether that's the actual rideability factor of it or just the materials themselves, you know, that they have really trying hard um, and they're doing things right. They're getting a good fit and finish. The, the um, you know, considering what you pay, you know, under 5,000 pounds and you can have a top of the range classic 350, which I think is fantastic. On the left-hand bar, we have a nice clutch lever there, really chunky, very easy to pull. And then we have the lights and the pass light there, indicators left and right, and a pass light on the other side. Then on the right bar, we have the hazards and the kill switch with an integrated start button. Well, so that's it, so that's the end of the review. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, now, there are some channels I can recommend if you'd like Royal Enfields, um, certainly with the 350 Meteor and the 350 Classic. Uh, my friend, uh, Economical Rides, he's got those uh, bikes and he, he does a good review on them. And also Saddlebag73, who has the Himalayan, uh, 400 and he also has the classic 500 uh, nicknamed Ernie and also lastly we have new biker as well who has a Himalayan and he mainly rides through London traffic um, again very good channel and they can give you a good um, owner's review 
So economical rides, Saddlebag 73 and new biker. So thank you very much to CMS in Exeter for loaning me the bike for the, for the day. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next video next week. Thanks a lot.